meet each other from the, from the object to the image, we can compare the optical path of the central ray with any other ray. Okay? So, if you solve this algebraic differential equation system, you will get this solution, where the only important things on this screen is RV, ZV. RV and ZV describe how must be the second surface in order to solve the problem. All these variables, I just put it because the equation is enormous. Actually, this uh, is <laughs> a screenshot of my uh, laptop with Mathematica. And uh, yes, it's like nine pages. <laughs> this is how it looks like. This is how uh, Levins, Newton, Huygens, Descartes, and many others want to find also the Euclid. But they don't find it. And this solution looks horrendous, but works perfectly. Actually, it's how we publish it. We get the editor speak from Applied Optics, and here I compare the preface of Huygens' uh, classic book, Traitor of Light, and part of my research. You can see this paragraph in this paper. And it's almost the same. One of the first is even how is the second surface in order to collect all the rays that touch the surface in a single point. So the pupil entrance is the ray, is the lens itself, like the parabola. So I mentioned that many people have been interested in solving the problem. In 2015, in the Royal Society Proceedings A, Juan Camilo Valencia Estrada, a researcher from Notre Dame University, he's from France, don't remember the name very well, he published a solution. His solution works only for particular cases. Here I compare his solution with my solution. The first thing that we should notice is that his solution is not symmetric. And it bloats in zero, because it's not symmetric. Also, the solution in this example I put here as the first surface I could sign, and the solution blows up. But we compare in the regions that we are interested, when we are like similar using this equation, RS error. So the error is very, very small. So it's almost the same equation, but the general form, not just for a particular case and for a particular case of the um, first quadrant. So we have also noticed that the first surface and the second surface must be topologically equivalent. This means that there is an homomorphism between them. An homomorphism means that from one set to another, there is a function that is continuous and its inverse is continuous as well. Because when we plot the equation and the rays cross each other, there is no homomorphism between the two surfaces. And what we got in Mathematica is that the that the um, second surface overlapped itself. So, well, as I told you, uh, the image distance is just a parameter. Here I put several examples when the first surface is a bezel function. For sure, bezel functions are not used in optical design because they are complex. I just want to show the robustness of the equation. The refraction index is also an input parameter. Here I put a negative refraction index. So for the guys who study metamaterials can be interested in. And for sure, if the object is very far away, just like in the parabolic mirror, you just can plot, uh, compute the limit with this minus infinity in some of the variables that I show you, and voila, you get the solution. And for sure, we compute the efficiency several ways. First, we get some polynomials and put it in Oslo and find a solution. But the problem is that Oslo or Cemax or all the other softwares, they will express everything in terms of fragile polynomials. So you have like some, let's say it, just the first polynomial you can put it and the information of all the other polynomials is lost. So we compute the accuracy of the method by the predicted ray, that is V3, and the computed rate by the solution that is B3 cross. Because here in ha inside we have the information of R, B, Z, V. And then we compare them for several samples, maybe hundreds of them, and it always gives a large amount of nines. And for sure, that depends on the machine precision. 
We also do the same thing for the parabola, and we we got the same number of nines. We got a lot of uh, good uh, revisions, got a very good, but the story doesn't end here. The next problem that we have already solved is given an arbitrary number of lenses, how much be or how must be the last lens, the last refraction surface in order to get a system free of spherical aberration. So you can say, well, the spherical aberration is just one of the aberrations. We have five fatal aberrations. Okay, well, but imagine in your CEMAX code you have this option. You just stop thinking about optim optimization process or merit functions to reduce the spherical aberration. Because this thing will guarantee you that the system is free of spherical aberration. Actually, here I put a doublet. The first doublet, the first surface are spheric. The second one is a cosine and a vessel function. Both doublets are very different from each other. But they have the central, the same central thickness, the same object, uh, first surface, and the image distance are the same. But they differ from each other. So you can choose the better, the best who fits your necessity. And well, here's a triplet. I call it this one triplet because there is a gap of air inside. More complex shapes. Then we went to telescopes. The question here is, given an arbitrary number of surfaces, how must be the shape of the aspheric telescope, the, the mirror, the mirror, in order to get an image through aspheric aberration? And then we go to freeform. We were talking all this time about radially symmetric uh, uh, lenses. Now we have a freeform surface as a, a re-input surface and our second surface is such as it is free of spherical aberration and also astigmatism because this shape is horrendous but this one is horrendous as the singlet is free of spherical aberration and astigmatism in this figure you will see that the lens is cut in a half so you can see the rays traveling inside the lens for sure we get a lot of exotic shapes this is a cosine in three dimensions, and this surface is such as this cosine in three dimensions is free spherical aberration for those given uh, object and image distances and refracting index as well. Well, there's more complicated uh, examples, and well, in here, this last example is a Bessel function. This is another function such as a free spherical aberration, but here we put the object and the image very far away in infinity. So the, the rays here are collimated and outside are collimated. And then I'm going back. I told you that Huygens mentions the problem in the preface. Well, actually in chapter 6, in this page, he tries to solve the problem. If you read these two boxes, you will find that it's the same problem. Actually, he mentions that Descartes was interested in the problem too. So he says, uh, given a surface AK, AK is given. The image point, the object point is in L. The thickness is given, AV. He wants to know this shape from K to V. So I was interested in this part of his book and with my Mathematica code I put similar values, not the same, and I got a very similar surface. So like 300 years ago, Huygens was very close to a solution using a numerical method. But now we have the analytical close form solution and that's it. Yes, well, right now I have uh, the solution 
for a singlet lens, mm -hmm. three of spherical aberration, but for two colors. Mm -hmm. the, the problem has not been uh, published yet, so that's why I don't mention it. But if it's, it's, these are just the first steps. Maybe with the solution we can find or understand why there is coma or why there's other systems because I think sign we use a numerical approaches, the physics of the problem are lost and for sure we can have wonderful cameras, telescope, blah blah blah, but mm -hmm. the physics was tough. Mm -hmm. And I think I for sure I have been trying a lot and not a problem that is given the solution that I gave you, I I told you that the first surface is chosen by the user. So which surface you need to choose in order that the system is free of coma? Um, I don't know, it's very hard. I haven't found a solution. It's, it's still being all open for all. Mm -hmm. yeah. but can you see a possibility uh, to apply the system as soon as you go over to get coma on those revelations? You are just using one one point one of this basically. Mm -hmm. Have you tried uh, uh, some of actors applications? I haven't tried it. Uh, as I told you, I want first have uh, well, I have the second surface yeah, and the uh, first surface, but I haven't tried a close from solution yet. It's it's very hard. What, what I also for me is uh, strange um, from the beginning. I mean the differential equations, they come in because you make the normal to the surface, right? That's where you get the gradient. Yes. And uh, that's why it turns out to be um, this one. a differential, large differential equation. Yes. Now, um, I have this gradient and I have the, the law of refraction at the surface. Yes. The signs. In the first surface, second surface. Mm -hmm. um, I know what, what's your point. We have three equations yeah. for nonce. The nonce are D, set B, and their derivatives. Mm -hmm. But the goal is to derivate the Fermat principle. So you will have a system for 4x4. Four four. And that's it. That's the solution. Okay, so you don't use explicitly the law of refraction, you use really the Fermat principle um, to get the first equation. Well, this is the Snell's law in vector form. Mm -hmm. What I don't use are sines and cosines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you have them with the cross for. Yes, well, they are inside, yeah. but I don't use angles. Yeah, I try to avoid angles. Actually, uh, I read a paper from from people <coughs> from Taiwan that they solve this problem <coughs> numerically, but they use angles and they get a horrendous <laughs> equations with angles inside. So it was very hard for them. That's why I avoid always the angles. Yeah, actually, if you see, I didn't mention any angle in the whole topic. Yeah, anyway, for me, it's complicated equation, and then you more or less just give it to Mathematica and it can solve it. Um, uh, no, 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 I, you need to express the, the things nicer to Mathematica. Okay. If you put this on Mathematica, it will do not yeah. You need to, you know, <laughs> it's like... Uh, they, yeah, for, but, for red babies, right? You yeah. have like the apple and you <laughs> smash it. And then now they, the baby can eat it. <laughs> so the smash thing, Mathematica does not do it. Okay. It's, 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 it's we're off trying to find how it, how was the solution. I mean, they, they come out very strange shapes. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not easy to manufacture. Yeah, but sure. um, has it been already used uh, for something up to now? It, or are we at the stage of pure theoretical things? Yeah, for me, it's a dream to make the lens. Mm -hmm. 
I haven't get the support enough to make it. Uh, for sure, many of these uh, shapes are complicated because I just want to, to see how robust Weld's equation. Mm -hmm. But for sure, I will. If I make a lens, I will. The first surface will be a spherical, and the other one will be a spherical surface, not a strange cosine or polynomial that will break the machine, the CNC. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I just put it because it doesn't happen with my lab. <laughs> Okay, if there are no further questions, then uh, thanks again for a very interesting So nach vorne zu gehen. Und so fallen, ja. ja, da kann man Kiwis manchmal im Busch beobachten, wie sie sich irgendwie im Schnabel stürzen. Das ist tatsächlich ein cooler Fallfeld. <lacht>